So like uh, promote was the word I was looking for. Promote traditional beer styles that we have around Europe. And uh, the beer style of Baltic porters is definitely uh, a traditional beer style that we have here in Europe, originating originally from, from England and then spreading and adapting to the more Nordic climate of Northern Europe. So I'm very happy to, to have, uh, is it Marcin or Martin Schimmelart talking? Martin. Yes, Martin to present uh, Baltic borders to us. So please, Martin, go ahead. I will try to mute these other ones now that yeah, I, I looked, I couldn't work out who was uh, where the background news. Could I ask everyone to mute their microphones apart from Marcin and for uh, and uh, uh, and uh, myself? Um, I just before we start and I'm going to hand over to you, Marcin, I just want to do a quick promotion for the next. We've got workshops coming up um, for the we're starting to do our uh, workshops. So we're thinking of planning ahead this year. So we've got a number of workshops coming up. Uh, the next workshop that we've got coming up, can I ask you to join us on the uh, February the 21st when Tim Webb is going to be talking about the challenges to the brewing industry from climate change. So if you're interested in that aspect, please do join us. Uh, it's on Tuesday the 21st of February. It's on the EBCU website. If you click on events and instead of clicking on all about beer, if you go to online workshops, there's a little form there you can click in. So that's it. Um, I'm going to hand over to uh, Marcin. Marcin, uh, if you want to share your slides or presentation, we should be able to do that. But uh, uh, over to you. Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to. Um, I'm not sure how to do it, to be honest. I'm if you click on the bottom and click on share screen. Yes, but it's uh, turned off by the host. Brett, I think you should enable Martin to. Yes, I haven't made him a co host, so we'll try again. As, as a host. I'll make him a host. Okay. Do you want to try again, Marcin? Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's working. You see? It's working. Fantastic. Yeah, perfect. Sorry, okay. Marcin. The other thing I will mention is. If people want to ask questions, put them in the chat window yes, yes, and I'll yes, feed those back to uh, to Marcin as uh, later on in the presentation. Yes, Thank definitely you. do that. So I will start. So, hello all. Uh, my name is Marcin Chmielasz. I will be talking about uh, Baltic porters. Uh, why me? Because uh, I was invited. I was invited to talk about Baltic porters because I'm the creator of Baltic Porter Day. Uh, which will be, which is um, in first uh, Saturday of January since 2016. And it's um, become quite popular in Poland, in other countries of Baltic Sea, not as much yet, but I hope it, it will grow eventually. Besides that, uh, I'm a beer vlogger. I have my channel on YouTube, Kociokwik. It's all in Polish, so not everyone can enjoy it, but we try to make some good materials. I am working in uh, Brewery Palatum, which is a small craft brewery in Warsaw. I'm also working in Craft uh, Beer Muranów, which is a pub in Warsaw. And also I'm working uh, with Novozymes uh, for brewing with enzymes. So I have a lot of things to do, but Baltic Porter is uh, really close to my heart, so it's my priority. So let's get to it. Or not. Oh, oh. Okay, great. So what is a Baltic Porter? Well, it's a strong dark beer, first of all. It's a strong dark beer with a multi aroma and flavors. It has not, we have nuts of coffee, chocolate, caramel, bread, toast, nuts, dark fruits, and etc. But it's not overly roasted. It's not like a imperial stuff. It should not be overly roasted, burned, stuff like that. It's dark brown, but it should be not pitch black. It should be, the key word with Baltic Porter for me is balanced. So the sweetness should be balanced by hopped bitterness. So they should, um, 
Well, they should just be balanced. It should not be overly sweet, overly malty, but on the other hand, not overly uh, bitter. It should have a clean fermentation profile and be very drinkable. Some time ago, I uh, drank a Baltic Porter, which had 9.7% alcohol, and I didn't feel it. So it was very drinkable, very light. And uh, one of the key characteristics, this beer is a lager. Or is it? Because there are some controversies, which I will talk about a bit later. But I have to talk about Baltic Porter to understand Baltic Porter, how it came to be. We need to talk a bit about origins of Porter. There are four questions, where, when, who, and why. And there is a story that I would like to address about uh, Ralph Harwood, a brewer in London who, they say, uh, invented Porter. It was in London, uh, something about 1722. And why? Because um, the story goes that there was a drink popular in London these days called Free Threads, which was mixed, uh, three uh, different beers mixed in the pub. So it was um, not easy. You have to take three casks for, from each one of them, mix it. So it take a long, long, of time, long time to uh, serve the beer. So Harwood thinks that he could make a beer that will be that will taste like this uh, mix. And this is the story that was uh, invented because it's not true. It was invented by John Feldham in 1802. And then it was repeated many, many times. And even today, a lot of stories credit Ralph Harwood to be the uh, creator of Porto. But in fact, okay, it was London, you know, thinking, oh, yeah, this is where the um, Porto begins. And it was in 1720, first mentioned in press we have from 1721, but we don't know who. We know that uh, there were some brown beer uh, brewers in London that uh, they feel the pressure of, well, I have to rewind a bit, something in the 16th century, um, wealthy people started coming to London. They had more, more money and they have a taste for paler beer because back then, most of the beers were black or brown because they were made with malt, uh, smoked, dried with uh, wood. It was brown malt, the cheapest one. It has smoky character, but uh, in 16, I think 50, something like this, uh, pale malt was invented in England. And then uh, the pale ale beer was born. And uh, the wealthy men come to London with taste for pale ale, which was um, trouble for the brown, be brown beer uh, brewers in London. They feel the pressure of um, new beer. So they need to do something about it. So we need, need to find, find, uh, fight back. Uh, so they enhance their uh, brown beer. They use more malt. They use more, ho more hops. And they aged uh, beer for longer time which uh, mellowed the smoky flavor. It was of course done for profit because they need uh, to fight back. And it turned out that uh, this new beer was quite good and uh, became quite popular with uh, porters. Porters, the de delivery men. There were a lot of uh, this working class in London back then. So they were unloading the ship and uh, carrying the stuff all around town. It was hard work and they need a lot of energy. So they drink a lot of beer. It says that um, Porter could drink as much as seven pints of beer per day just to get energy need for work. And the problem with brown malt, uh, it was made with um, using wood. So we had a distinctive smoky aroma, which was not desirable. To get rid of this smoky aroma, uh, the beer had to be stored for about a year. And it was stored in multiple cellars around town in wooden barrels called butt. And it was a problem because there was a lot of butts around town and uh, some so the brewers don't have um, control over them. They had to pay rent for those. And sometimes the butts were stolen. Well, there were a lot of problems. So, they uh, at some point tried to 
have all the beers together in one place. So they started build, building um, a large wooden vats. Uh, you can see on the picture, but there are some of the vats. The, the biggest one that uh, were created were something about 30 yeah, to 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, hectoliter each. Nice. So it, uh, the one the one vat had a capacity of, um, I don't know if you know the Pinta Brewery in Poland. So the Pinta Brewery have like um, something about 30,000 hectoliters production really. So this one vat was bigger than the whole Pinta production of one year. And of course, there were Britannomyces in those uh, wooden vats, as you would imagine. And they give a pleasant aroma to the beer. So the beer after this year maturation was not very smoky. It was very well balanced. It uh, had some nice aromas from the bread. So it was quite drinkable. And because um, they were stored in such huge, huge vats, the brewery needs a lot of money to invest, but a lot of money, well, they gave, have a lot of money. So the brewers, brewers London brewers, Porter, Porter brewers, were very uh, quickly growing. So they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually the London uh, Porter Brewers became the biggest uh, brewers in the world. So in 19, uh, 1809, the Anchor Brewery was the biggest in the world and they were leaders in innovations like saccharomyces and measuring temperature in the brewery. So the, the scale become uh, brewers to be possible to be even bigger and bigger and bigger. And because there were big breweries, they, they could uh, invest uh, in marketing and they could import their beers. And uh, Porter was a beer that was suitable for long journeys because it was, it was stale, not stale like we uh, call it today, but stale was the um, name of, for the Porter that was aged for about a year and there was uh, they were mild and stale so the stale porter was um, have no residual sugars so it was very good for for, um, for traveling even to india united states jamaica stuff like that so it was shipped to north america south africa so by the half of 18th century a porter was was everywhere it was on every continent even uh, you know the story about India Pale Ale. It was shipped to India for uh, for the Englishmen then, but it turned out that uh, export porter was shipped as well, but in bigger quantities. Even for one pint of India Pale Ale, there were about two pints of uh, export porter. We don't uh, know about well, some of us do, but uh, generally we it's uh, it's forgotten, and this is because. Uh, the pale ale was much more expensive and it was drunk by officers and the higher class in, in India. And Porter was drunk by just regular soldiers. So the story, they, the officers came back to England and tell everyone uh, about the beer. And uh, the story went on and on. The ordinary um, part, uh, soldiers, if they came back, nobody would listen to them. And there is a myth about uh, exporting beers, which I have to address a bit. And so it said that the uh, uh, beers for export were highly hot and uh, have a much higher alcohol content than domestic versions to survive the, the journey. Which is not true because they were, of course, there were more hops. There were hops added to the casks, which were used to um, for the exporting the beer, but the alcohol level was roughly the same. And this made, uh, okay, it has some credentials when you think about the Indian uh, exporting to India, which was a very long uh, trip, but uh, it, they also said that the um, porters exported to Russia had to be stronger because they could freeze during the journey, which is of course not true because the sea would freeze before the beer could. And the story about the Russian court, we're closing to uh, the origins of Baltic portal, is that um, stout portal, which is the name of a stronger portal because stout meant uh, strong, so 
there was a portal and stout portal, a stronger portal. It was popular in St. Petersburg amongst the aristocracy. And they say that um, when in 1906, Napoleon blockade banned um, English brewers from um, exporting beer to Russia, the continental brewers had to do something similar. Uh, so they started brewing port. But as we know, uh, the export of uh, porter was way, way earlier. So uh, the Baltic states, the people there, knew the beer already, and uh, they tried to make something similar way, uh, years before the continental blockade. And the first mention of uh, porter being brewed in the Baltic Sea region is from Sweden from 78. So the 60 years after the porter was invented. Uh, we don't know which brewery made it. We know in 1791, William Knox opened his portal brewery. And in 1870, another brewery near Stockholm, which later became, was bought by Carnage, which is uh, still uh, functioning today. And in Poland, the first mention of brewing porter was from 18 uh, in brewery in Grudziądz. And there were some, some porter being brewed in Poland, in other countries as well, during the continental blockade. Sometimes uh, the beers were very nice. There was one brewer uh, from Warsaw, I believe, uh, that was accused of uh, illegally, illegally uh, shipping uh, English beer to Poland and selling it as his own because it was so good, so close to the original. And uh, I have to mention that uh, Porter, because the British brewers, Porter brewers were so advanced, uh, the Porter was um, was very highly acclaimed um, among, amongst the drinkers. In, beginning of 19th century in Poland, uh, most of the brewers were not very big. Uh, they have some problems with hygiene and the big beer uh, was uh, spoiling very quickly. So they have to be drunk very fresh. And the porters could be kept, uh, they were in good condition for days, months even. So it was very advanced and people would, uh, would pay a lot more for an English porter than they would for uh, domestic beer. So it's a, another argument for the brewers to try to make something similar and get all the profit, of course. But after the uh, Napoleon defeat, porter export was restored and most of the Polish uh, porter brewers, well, they, they, don't, they didn't survive because people wanted, wanted to pay more for better uh, Poly, uh, English uh, porters. And then in 1824, it, uh, the export was banned again. And this time, Polish brewers, um, with the, again, started making uh, porters. They made, it, um, they made it to last. So when it was restored again, uh, the Polish uh, porter brewers were still opening, still functioning, still doing uh, good beers. And, of, uh, and uh, there was still export of uh, English beer to Poland. So we know that uh, something uh, in the middle of 19th century, there were English porter, Angielski porter, and uh, domestic porter, porter Krajowy. So to uh, which one, which one was which. And this is the drawing of uh, one of the uh, Polish uh, porter breweries. It was uh, quite big and uh, very successful. And especially there were two or three brewers in Warsaw that were making uh, very good beers uh, compared to English ones or even better. And there's, a, when we talk about Baltic porters history, there is one key point. When it became a bottom fermented beer, so we know that um, when uh, b b porters were made in Poland, initially they were made um, as ale. So um, 
um, of fermented, like the English uh, ones. So because the brewers wanted to make beers similar to the English ones. So probably in 19th, 19th century, all uh, porters made in the Baltic uh, Sea region were top fermented. But as the lagering methods were becoming more and more popular, more and more brewers switched to bottom fermented um, porters. So we know in the beginning of uh, 20th century, in one brewery, it was uh, bottom fermented. But in Warsaw, in the most uh, famous uh, porter brewers, brewer in Poland, it was uh, still using, uh, made using English methods and English yeast. In, in Russia, even to 1938, it was still top fermented. It was the, even below to ferment it uh, like this. And something after the Second World War, probably all porters became uh, bottom fermented with some, some exceptions like uh, Sinebrichov Porter in Finland. And this is, uh, for many, this is the key element for um, when the Baltic Porter was born, because this is the key characteristic of it. So it's a lager beer, but we don't know who made it first and why. We know for sure that uh, it wasn't, this is the, another myth that uh, is, running around, around internet that uh, when the porters first were made in the continent, they were uh, made using lageries because uh, it was popular back then. No, it was not yet. It, be, it uh, gradually became popular, but uh, not, not there. It was made, it was made to be like the, uh, the English porter. So it had to be made with uh, similar ingredients and similar uh, techniques. The name Baltic Porter itself uh, is uh, relatively new. What I know is uh, it was uh, first uh, mentioned in 1994 in the in book Beers of the World, but uh, most people associate the Baltic Porter name with Michael Jackson, who popularized it even more in about 1998. And um, why uh, did he call it Baltic Porter? Because back then, uh, brew, um, beers made in uh, Poland, Estonia, Russia, porters that were made in the um, Baltic uh, Sea basin were just called porters. But uh, the beers that Michael Jackson knew, the porters that Michael Jackson knew were a bit different. Because uh, after the First World War and after the Second War, even more, uh, the porters in England well, they started that for in uh, 20th century from the beginning. But as you remember, I, uh, there was a porter and stout porter. So stout was stronger. And after the war, the gravity of both beers were lower and lower because of the problems with um, with malt. Malt have to be used, uh, grain have to be used for making bread. So the porters were, were weaker and weaker and weaker up to the point where they were, they were so weak that they were undrinkable. They were spoiling very fast and it was like they have 2% alcohol. So the stouts, which were a bit stronger, survived, but the porters, nobody wanted to drink that. In Ireland, it was about till 1970 that that porter survived, but in America, uh, Porter was brewed again from 17, 1972, and the Ankh Porter was uh, closer to the Porter's, well, it was similar to the Porter that uh, Ankh made currently, but uh, in strength, it was closer to the weaker Porter's than those that gave birth to the Baltic Porter's, because uh, Porter's made in base in Baltic Sea Basin were still roughly the same strength as they were when, they, when the continental brewers began to brew them. So they were about 8% alcohol and they keep that, that strength. So it was uh, a bit unusual for the English uh, Englishman like Michael Jackson. So probably he 
call it Baltic Porter, so to make it recognizable to different it from the porters from the from the UK and America as well. Right. So at the present day, Baltic porters are brewed around the world, mostly in Baltic Sea Basin, of course, but there are a lot of uh, very nice Baltic porters being brewed in the United States as well. In Canada, there is one brewery that makes fantastic Baltic porters. Well, in Poland, we, we like to say about ourselves that we are the leaders of the style. And each year, in the last like five, or five years, around 80 new Baltic porters are brewed in Poland each year. And most of those, not only those in Poland, but uh, around the world, they are laggers, but there are still, that, still some that use a list. And in BJCP, you can see that they, they it could be used, uh, could be made using a list, but um, the fermentation profile had to be clean. And uh, in fact, uh, one of the Baltic porters made in Poland with uh, a list. Uh, won a gold medal in one of the competitions uh, last year. So, so it could be made uh, according to style, according to how the style should be. And I like to um, to differentiate the Baltic portals for classic, imperial, barrel aged, smoked, etc. So imperial Baltic portals generally are everything that is above 22 plato. Because the, the Baltic porters itself, they should be, in my opinion, but not only mine, uh, at least 18 plato to 22. This is, the 22 is the most classic one. It was um, made during the 20th century. Even if, uh, in Poland, there was a law uh, that was until I think 1980 something, uh, that porter should have 22 plato. Uh, there was similar law in Russia, but I think there, that was uh, 20 plate there. So there are variations, Imperial Baltic Porters, which are 24, 26, even to 30 plate. There are smoked versions that are made using smoked mold, which is nice touch, considering how the porters uh, became, how the style uh, was born, using smoked mold. There are, of course, uh, versions that are uh, barrel aged in different barrels, mostly it is, is um, bourbon, but also wine, cognac, whiskey, whatever you can find. Uh, in last years, the forest distilling is becoming more popular, making some of the, well, this is not a Baltic portal anymore because it's syrupy, it's uh, very strong, it's very rich, it's like more of everything. And of, there are, of course, pastry versions, which uh, we won't talk about because this is abomination, full of lactose and, and stuff. And uh, something that is um, very interesting, the I call it vintage Baltic porters, because um, Baltic porters are beer that, beers that are very often aged for years in uh, the cellars, and that uh, gives them very distinctive aging profile, which I will talk about a bit later. Uh, just a few words about uh, brewing about the porters. Mm. Some say that the uh, water is not uh, important, but it is very important. It's very important that the water used for brewing Baltic porters and other uh, dark strong beers as well have a high residual alkality. As uh, we use uh, dark uh, malts and roasted malts, and they will lower the pH. So if the water will be very soft and without anything to them, the beer will be unbalanced and uh, harsh and acid. We don't want that. Uh, to use as a base molds, I will recommend using Munich Vienna or Pale Ale molds. Not exactly Pilsner molds. Of course, some brewers uh, use that, but if you want to age the beer, you would like uh, Munich or Vienna mold. And of course, a bunch of crystal and roasted molds to give it uh, character and color, but I would uh, suggest to avoid using roasted uh, barley because it could give a bit harsh and burned uh, taste and aroma. And uh, 
For hopping, we for classic Baltic porters, we use um, hops just to just to balance the sweetness and maltiness. And I would say go for hops with high levels of beta acids, especially some noble European hops, because uh, that hops will be better uh, later for aging beers in the cellar. If you don't want, don't want to use the celery beer to age your beer, you can use whatever hops you would like. But uh, the Baltic porters need a bit of time. So the in the classic Baltic porter should be aged for in brewery for at least half a year. And there are some that are aged a year in the brewery, and then go to bottle, and then people want to age it uh, even more. So aging is an important factor. And of course, uh, clean yeast, clean fermenting yeast, you don't want to use uh, fake or stuff like that. And uh, with high alcohol tolerance, we don't want the yeast to go to sleep when the alcohol level become 8% because it could be uh, 10%. So you want them to finish their job, not to leave too much uh, unfermentable sugar. I like to talk about a few noble, notable examples of uh, Baltic porters that you can buy. Mostly, that of them will be, of course, Polish. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, if you want a classic Baltic porter, I would recommend something like uh, Comets from Fortuna or Porter Warmiński from Kormoran, which are uh, available in in Poland basically everywhere. I don't know how about how about the export. I know that Comets is sent uh, to some countries in Europe as well. And uh, last uh, December, uh, there was a big competition of uh, beers in Poland, Kraft Roku, and uh, Porter Staropolski uh, won it. So it was the, voted the best uh, beer in Poland, which is uh, interesting because the brewery itself does not make a very good beer most of the time, but they made one very good. If you want something imperial, there is Pinta Imperator Bautycki, which is, I think, the first imperial Baltic porter that was made, not for sure, in Poland. It was made in 2014. And it's 25 plato, and it's very high uh, in hops. Its IBU is uh, about 100, and it's dry hopped. So it was something completely different when it was released. Uh, Comoran Imperium Pruno, Pruno, which is currently still the highest rated uh, Baltic porter uh, on right beer. So it's an uh, imperial Baltic porter with 26 uh, plato, and it's made using smoked plum, Suska Sechlańska. And from our friends in uh, Estonia, uh, Poyala, which is, uh, this is uh, actually top fermented, but still it's a very good porter. For butter aging, uh, from Poland, we have Vidava. Each year, they make an anniversary uh, Imperial Baltic Porter, and then they barrelate it and release it. So every year, you have a new version. In Poyala, this is they also made a lot of uh, barrel aged uh, porters. Armchair Detective is one of my favorites of those I tried, but a lot of them are very, very good. And Pinta Barrel Brewing, which is currently the highest uh, rated uh, brewery in Poland. So they make only uh, barrel aged beers, and this is porter that has uh, that's also imperial because uh, 30 plato. And here some of the porters are a bit too sweet. So if I uh, have to, if I would judge them, uh, I would they would not be very highly rated. But this is what the people want. So this is what the breweries make, and even more sugar more of everything uh, in the freeze distilled beer. Uh, three Polish examples, Comes, Wymrażany Porter, and on this Baltic Porter, the new edition. Uh, Marienstadt, Ice Imperial Baltic Porter, and Spudzielczy, they are uh, specialists in uh, freeze, distilled freeze distilled beers. They made a whole lot of them, and they are very good. And those beers are not what the uh, Baltic Porter Classic butter porter is so they are very thick and very rich and like uh, 15 to 20 percent alcohol so it's uh, something to share not to drink by yourself and there are some 
some discussion uh, what is the difference between Baltic Porter and Imperial Stout. Of course, today things are a bit different than they were back, uh, back then when Porters, Baltic Porters were born. Back then, there was uh, virtually no difference. The brown stout or uh, stout porter, brown stout porter, as it was called, and porter made uh, in Poland, they were the same beer. But of course, things have changed. And now, if, we, if Mario stout is uh, more of everything, so it's more black, it has more roastiness, more sweetness, more hoppiness, but it's more syrupy. It's more a sipper than a beer you can drink in large quantities. You should not drink Baltic Porter in very high quantities because of the alcohol content, of course. But it's a, Baltic Porter should be very drinkable. I heard a description, Baltic Porter is a drinkable imperial stout, which to some extent is true. And I would like to um, follow up with some aging Baltic Porters. In Poland, a lot of people, when they buy a new Baltic Porter, they, be, they buy uh, two bottles or cans. One to drink and one to sell. And they are selling something for year two, five, ten, or whatever. And because it's uh, dark and strong beers, it's quite suitable for aging and it could be quite a nice experience. But uh, if you want to do that, you have to have a constant te temperature low humidity, no light, constant temperature, like uh, fridge temperature, probably up to 15 degrees, but um, not more. And uh, the effect will be will depend on the uh, conditions that you store the beer in and uh, on the brewing process and ingredients that were used. So this when we come back to the base molds. You want to use a lot of Munich molds and Vienna molds because they have uh, more. Uh, I forgot the word. More proteins, which will be useful for a longer aging. And uh, using a lot more. More roasted molds, but uh, not very uh, highly roasted. So you and crystal molds will help to build the profile that is needed for long aging. And of course, the, the hops, the beta acids are, um, can keep uh, maintain the bitterness on similar level. And when you use the hops with a lot of alpha acids, the bitterness will, will disappear and there will be nothing to counteract the sweetness that will be left. And uh, if the, if the beer was good and the conditions were good, after like five years or even 10 years, you can have a very round, smooth, mellowed beer with uh, aromas of raisins, plum, tobacco, sherry, stuff like that. But uh, if you made it, if you do it wrong, if you do it in wrong temperature or, or the beer will be not suitable for aging whatsoever, it will smell of cardboard, baked potatoes, green apple, honey, stuff you don't want to drink. So we have to be careful about it and know about the beer that you want to age. And I'll finish with a few words about Baltic Porter Day, which is uh, this week, this weekend. So I would say it was first time held in 2016. And this year, at the present moment, I have, uh, I know about 40 new Baltic Porters which are uh, brewed or released specially for the event. And I have a list of 74 places in Poland and 35 places in 11 other countries that will take part in celebration of this style. So it's not bad, but I hope it will grow further. So I think that's uh, what, I was, what I want to say. So let's get to the questions. Okay. Thank you, Marcin. That was brilliant. Absolutely superb. Um, Marcin, can you see the questions? I mean, uh, there's a, a number of questions to you, some of them about the technology. Apologies if you uh, were unable yes. to join, you had difficulty joining. I don't know why there's been a problem with that, but we maybe look into it. And if anyone wants to suggest, make some suggestions that we can improve it, that'd be brilliant. But I think the important um, thing is, Marcin, can you see the questions? Yes, I can. 
Uh, that was my fault because I wanted to uh, connect through a website and I didn't have the application. So it took me some time to get but, but uh, So let's get to questions. Okay. Do you want to maybe finish the presentation and close the presentation maybe? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Ah, okay. There we go. Okay. Does extensive storage really remove the smoky aroma? Sean Carlos said there's many years of vintage beer beers these days. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, it re removes uh, not all of the smoky aroma, but enough for the consumers back then uh, to enjoy the beers. Because the beers, uh, when they were fresh, they were very smoky. And they, when they were stale after a year, the smokiness faded away. Plus, uh, the temperature that uh, Schlankerla stored the beer is lager in temperature. And the temperature in which the porters were stored was ambient temperature. So the process of um, removing the smoky aroma was much quicker, it, much quicker in the higher temperatures. And of course, the porters of these days were inoculated, not um, they were with uh, Brettanomyces. So the Brettanomyces mm, get their profile, the forty um, profile. So it all together combined to get rid or, um, of the smoky aroma, extensive smoky aroma. I think if Schleckerla would age uh, their beers in giant wooden vats for a year in ambient temperature with Brettanomyces, the smokiness will be not very, mm, not very high. It was 40,000 liters, not hectoliters per bag. Uh, all the media said that, uh, all the materials that I found said that it was 40,000 hectoliters. And there was some uh, some article that said that uh, in the vet, uh, they could hold um, supper for 200 people. When they were building it, before they uh, uh, poured the beer in, it was a ceremonial dinner for 200 people. Difference of Baltic Porter versus Porter, but uh, Baltic Porter versus which Porter? Because you have Baltic Porter, you have English Porter, you have a robust Porter, you have Imperial Porter, and you have um, American Porter. But uh, if you want to, um, Talk about the English porter nowadays. So the English porter is uh, something up to 30 or 40 Plato, made with a list uh, with different molds. So the English porter will be with aromas of uh, toast and nuts. Uh, with a, a lot of um, caramelly notes as well, while Baltic Porter have a different profile, um, very clean finish, and it's uh, higher in alcohol and in uh, original gravity, of course. Are there, <clears throat> are there any dry hopped Baltic Porters in Poland? Or is it too much out of the style? No, there are a lot of uh, dry hot Baltic porters. Well, a lot. There are a few. And Imperator Baltycki is one of those. And uh, in this uh, Baltic Porter Day, there will be risk of my uh, collaboration with Nook Brewery. We made the Imperial Baltic Porter, which is dry hot. So anything is possible. Usually it's not dry hot because uh, the hop profile usually usually clash with the multi profile, so you would you would not use a Citra or a Dorado and stuff like this. But if you use uh, like a Cinco or Chinook or something that is more piney, that could be really nice. 
And the dry hopping was invented to for the beers to be um, kept for longer. So and porters as well. So porters imported to India were dry hop. So, so there's something so history of dry hopping porters. Is there any relation between Baltic porter and what it's called robust porter? Mm, very no, not really. To be honest, robust porter is um, Americanized version of classic English porter, which we know now. So, not uh, the historic uh, English porter. So, the robust porter is um, closer to American style. It, uh, it's more of everything. So, it's more hoppy, hoppy more. Um, more roasty than uh, English porter, more assertive bitterness, stuff like that. So it's good. And historically, there is no relation, but of course, they all came from the same porter years ago. Do I have a recipe for a homebrew Baltic uh, porter? Uh, I have some, but. Uh, I didn't make a slide about uh, recipes, but if you go for a website of Polish uh, Home Brewers Association, I'll oh, share a link. Why not? Give me a second. Martin, if I may add something about the homebrew recipe, in the current issue of uh, our Polish yeah. uh, brewing magazine, Pivovar, uh, Baltic Porter is the style of the issue, and there's a homebrew recipe include also. Yes, it is. And <clears throat> with a lot of uh, nice recipes for Baltic Porter around the internet. As well. Okay. Another question. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, do you know which beer was the first labeled as Baltic Porters? No, I do not. And uh, I don't know if anyone knows that. So up to 1990s, there was no Baltic Porters. Uh, there were just Porters. So something in 2000s, probably. But uh, I don't know which, uh, but if you ask which was labeled, probably it could be fine, found by, uh, if you study the archives of the breweries and the labels. Uh, but uh, if you want to know which beer could be uh, called the first Baltic Porter, so which was the first bottom fermented, I don't know, I don't know that. and. Uh, I looked uh, it up a lot. I made the research. Still have no uh, answer to this question. Maybe someday we will know. Uh, are aged Baltic porter aging barrels wood or aging used whiskey barrels? Uh, they are aged in uh, used barrels. There are whiskey barrels, bourbon barrels, wine, cognac, anything you can find. I did not uh, know of any Baltic porter that was uh, aged in fresh uh, oak barrel. Most of the beers are aged in, in barrels uh, used, used whiskey barrels and stuff like that because we want the the profile of the alcohol to be uh, transferred to the beer. Could be considered the Baltic Porter like a pre-prohibition English Porter. Hmm. Take a question. I, it's a pre, pre something uh, Porter, uh, but Baltic Porters changed uh, since uh, they were uh, first uh, brewed. So it's a question of. Um, and sometimes some, somebody tells me, uh, I uh, read about a historical recipe for porter. Uh, you should always ask the question, but from which, uh, which period? Because the beers changed 
So the Baltic portals that were made in beginning of 19th, uh, 20th century were different than uh, they are now. And before that, they were even more different. So it's all changing, so it's really hard to tell. Um, okay. Since strong stout porters were exported through Europe back in the day, why did the name not become Baltic stout? Uh, because uh, the, the beers that, um, the stout was not um, the name of the style. The porter was the name of the style. And um, the beers that were exported were uh, porters, they were stout porters, and they were brown porters. But it was a porter. So if a um, brewer, brewer wants to make their own version, they want to make a version of porter. Stout porter was just strong. So the name stout was just uh, like now we use uh, the term imperial or double for double IPA or imperial IPA. We would not um, want to brew a beer called imperial or double, just imperial or double. You would make an IPA, so it was the same. Uh, what is the reasonable limit of alcohol in porter? Uh, typically, it's around nine percent, but I saw five percent porter and eighteen percent porter. Uh, sky is the limit, I'd say. Yeah, but if you want to talk about the classic uh, Baltic porter, I would say that ten, ten and a half percent, it's okay. Uh, the eighteen percent probably is was fry freeze distilled so it's um, it, uh, the process makes it uh, more interesting but on the other hand it loses the characteristic of Baltic porter and the 5% porter well, it's not a Baltic porter to be honest because the BJCP states that 14.7 uh, original gravity in Plato that's enough for the Baltic porter but to be honest it's not to have the characteristic and the profile of Baltic Porter, you need uh, at least 18 Plato, but preferably 20 to 22. Yep, so that's, that's the question. I hope I uh, get everything covered. Fantastic. So are there any more questions, maybe? Anything else for folks? Martin, I think I think you've covered it. Absolutely superb. Thank you. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Martin. It was um, really interesting. I, I'm so glad I managed to find a, a porter, even if it's not a Baltic porter, but there we go. Um, right. So, um, Martin, that's absolutely brilliant. And, and again, apologies to everyone if... Uh, well, to those people who were unable to join, we'll, we'll have a look at it. If anyone's got any suggestions, how we can link the ticketing through Eventbrite and Zoom, then please get in touch with me. Um, but uh, thanks to everyone. It was a really good talk, Marcin. And uh, have a happy Baltic Porter Day. And uh, as I said before, the next workshop is the 21st of February, and it's about climate change and beers and brewing. So that's Tim Webb. So... I'm sure uh, I'm sure that will be useful to everyone. OK, thanks very much, everyone. Uh, have a good evening and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, Cheers. Cool. Thanks, Martin. Bye bye. Już po polsku Marcin, wielkie dzięki w imieniu moim i całego PSTD za przyjęcie mm. zaproszenia. Jasne. Uf, trochę się stresowałem, ale Okay, Było dobra. bardzo dobrze. Okej, okay, to dobrze. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Dziękuję, Marcin. Dzięki.